And the play came on the final play of the first quarter. So there you have your score at the end of part one. Pullman 13, Peninsula 7. And it looks, as you see, Hull once again on his touchdown romp. As if we're going to have one tremendous contest and that these two teams certainly deserve to be here, Clay, to play for the state double-A title. Larry Lunke, the Peninsula coach, breathing a little easier now, his team down 13 to nothing. We saw Peninsula fall behind Fife by a couple of touchdowns early in the season. During their regular season, Fife and Pullman incidentally met along the way and Pullman won a 19 to 16 thriller in playoff competition. Peninsula had to come from behind to beat Fife, but they thrashed the Trojans. Here's the kick out of Brooks at the 18, 25. Wriggles from a couple of tacklers, 30, 35 yard line penalty flags down. Sure had a lot of penalties early in this one. Doug, the Pullman Greyhounds almost completely dominated that first quarter with the exception of the final minute, and it's 13 to 7. And that extra point could loom large in the final outcome. Of course, they go, can go for those two pointers that can make a difference. Well, here's another major 15-yard penalty. Referee Ben Finch saying that the Pullman Greyhounds were guilty of clipping. Talking about Peninsula and Fife, as you see that kickoff and our instant replay, and you'll see Brooks take it there at just shy of the 20. Watch him spin off that tackle right there as he eluded number 23, Rod Heimgartner of Peninsula. And then his two time with Greg Henson, number 63, credited with the tackle on the play. Here are the Seahawks rising to the occasion defensively now as Pullman tries to get its ground game going, but Brooks cannot get outside. Talking about Fife and Peninsula, Peninsula came back to win that game 42 to 21 to claim the Seamount Championship. Loss of one to Brooks. And if my memory serves me correctly, Peninsula fell behind Capitol High School 21 to nothing when they were in playoff action. I had that game on Channel 13 earlier in the year, and I'm pretty sure it was a three touchdown deficit. It was some kind of game. There's the pass to Pellerin. 25 30 breaks loose. 35 40 still going. 45 50, 49 yard line. Great run by Pellerin. Watch it again now as Wannan and Fakes and now has Pellerin outside. Now watch him pull away from tacklers. Tony Williams tries and can't hang on. Gene Thompson finally drags him down, but uh, that's O'Hara and Thompson jumping aboard there. Now here's the ball loose. I think Pullman has it. There will be a One and incidentally is three for three in passing for 48 yards now. Two of those receptions going to his fullback. Well, they lost a yard on that miscue. And it's second down and a good 11 yards to go. One and sends McNeil in motion. Now goes to Brooks on a counter up the middle. And he's to the 49. It's as far as he can go. Back about to the original line of scrimmage. Tony Williams, the linebacker. Peninsula plays a 5-2 defense, and it's uh, what they call an Arkansas monster defense with a monster back or rover back, but basically it's a 5-2 uh, defense. And Tony Williams and Rob Carlson, the two linebackers, the entire defense is predicated for them to make the tackles. Williams has 59 tackles and 45 assists coming into this game. Ian Carlson are the team leaders. Give through the middle for about three. That's McNeil. And it brings up a fourth and seven now as the ball's at the Peninsula 45-yard line. Rob Carlson, the tackler. And Wannanen is back to the 41-yard line to kick for Pullman. Scancy's the man who receives for Peninsula. Wannanen trying to angle for the corner, but... It's taken by O'Hara at the 10, and he's dropped inside the 10 on fine coverage by number 82, Todd Patrick of Pullman. 
There you have another look at it as Patrick jumps aboard there. Patrick, 175 pound junior, getting great punt coverage for Pullman. Incidentally, Doug, uh, Bill Kimber, our producer, would like to pass along thanks to the Kingdom here and their officials for allowing the use of their replay cameras. It adds a dimension, of course, to the telecast. Great to see those thrilling plays over again, I tell you. Here's Scancy on a slot back reverse. He's at the 15 and cartwheel down at the 19 yard line. Keith Malmquist, number 30, is the tackler on the play for Pullman. Gonna see Scancy again. Ellie vaulted over number 34, Paul Goebel, and then Malmquist gathered him in. Scancy got nine on the play. Hunt giving to Hall, and Mike has the first down. Actually got five yards on the play, and now has 64 yards and five carries. Ed Roan and Randy Cook making the tackle there. As you see, Roan number 32 and Cook number 70 hopping aboard. First and 10 for the Hawks, who have thrown only three times in the game, and that's a surprise. They average about 30 passes a game. Here's Brian Page on the reverse, and he can't elude that sure-handed tackle by number 60, Sam Jankovic of Pullman. You're going to see it again. See Sam get in by the leg, and Brian can only get a yard. Double slot back formation, which Peninsula uses on every offensive play. Here's Scancy being tripped as he went out for the pass, and the interference call on Pullman will provide Peninsula with impetus. Referee Ben Finch to mark it off now. It was Carl Kimball, who's an inside linebacker, who got tangled up with Scancy and sent him down. Now you'll see Hunt throwing, and let's see if we get Scancy. There you see Scancy trip. As Kimball got his foot in there, and Though it might have been inadvertent, it nonetheless was interference. Here's a fake and a give to Scancy. Ball to the outside and cuts the corner. 45. Another tackler eluded for the 36 yard line and a great individual effort by Paul Scancy. Doug, catch up football is difficult at best, but these Peninsula Seahawks catch up in a hurry. Ed Rowan, number 32, as you see Scancy now eluding tacklers on the instant replay, and Kimball, number 65, come, uh, are the men who finally make the tackles. Wannan and slowing him down there. Michael. That was Hull, the fullback, up the middle. Two yards. A couple of yards. Scancy, you know, most noted for his pass catching, but uh, he's an all-around uh, performer. He returns kickoffs and punts, and he is the leading Peninsula scorer with 116 points this year. Hunt being rushed, comes out of the puck. 35-30, 25-22 yard line. Steve Hunt with a first down for Peninsula. Now you see Steve elude that rush and wisely tuck the ball and go. First and 10 for the Hawks. Here's Mike Hall to the 12, to the 10 yard line. Sam Jankovic, number 60, and Keith Malmquist, number 30, are the tacklers. 
But Hall has nearly enough for the first down. You see it again. Here's the first down and a 10 yard gain. Good extra effort by the 185 pound junior. Just 76 the yards and seven carries now for Hall Clay. He's having a big game. Brian Page inside the 10, but Greyhounds are there to get him. Doug, we pointed out that the Seahawks have scored 30 or more points in seven games. They've scored 40 or more points in three games, so they really have the high-powered, high-geared offense and it's uh, being manifested right here, trailing by 6, 13 to 7, and on the verge of tying or going ahead. Ed Rohn made that last tackle for Pullman. Here are the Hawks on second and eight. Pullman's in a four-man line. Scancy and Hunt dribbling it around, and there's a scramble for it at the 15. I think Hunt has recovered his own fumble, and that'll be a loss of seven. Less line number 74 there in your screen did the great job defensively. He's a 190 pound senior for Peninsula. Watch it again. He takes care of Steve Hunt right there. Third down and 14 yards to go. They can get a first down inches shy of the goal line. Hunt to pass. Looking for Burton. What a grab, but he's out of bounds. Paul Goebel defending on the play, number 34 for the Pullman Greyhounds. You're going to see it again. Clay, this is a fine catch. Right, Doug, and he tried desperately to stay in bounds, and he was just out. Well-thrown pass, but just out of bounds. Burton has caught 14 passes this year for 205 yards and three touchdowns. All of the Hawks have great statistics receiving. They're not going to go for three right now. It's fourth down, 14 yards to go at the 15, and Hunt's back to pass. He's under pressure. Throwing for Scancy. He's out of bounds at the two, and that's shy of the first down. Scancy caught it and had to go out of bounds. You're going to see Hunt under pressure now. And on the run, hit his man. Paul didn't have much chance to stay in. But. No, and uh, had to come back on the pass. Uh, but they could have had a first down at the one, but to all intents and purposes, it was fourth and goal. That's Scancy's 82nd catch of this year for 1,447 yards, and he has 14 touchdowns. Pullman now operating deep in its own territory as they've held. Here's one and end, and the ball's jolted free. Peninsula may have a touchdown. They do. Bob Valley, the great defensive lineman. Well, Doug, if you can't make it one way, you make it an, uh, another way, and certainly that turn of events, disastrous for the Pullman Greyhounds, and now it's tied as you see it again. There's the loose ball, scrambled for, almost went out of the end zone. What a job he did, Clay. Bob Valley, number 70, right in the middle of your screen. He caused the fumble and then went and got it. I mentioned earlier he's the top defensive uh, lineman uh, for Peninsula as Steve Hunt tries to put his team ahead and does. So the Hawks have come back. They lead it 14 to 13. Valley on the season as a tackle has had 47 tackles and 41 assists. And those are linebacker statistics. Tremendous. And these Hawks now have taken the momentum, if we can use that term, and I know it's overused, but has have now taken the lead at 14 to 13, and now it'll be up to Pullman to try to put together in the final four minutes and 10 seconds of this first half a drive to regain the lead. The way the Greyhounds have gone thus far, Clay, it's very much a possibility. Burton will kick it off. He almost stumbled and fell. 
And it's going to be a short kick picked up by Heidenreich at the 35, and he gets maybe a yard. Mike Heidenreich, who along with his brother Eric, are the two offensive ends for Pullman. And we'll give you their interior lineman, number 75, Dave Raywalt. There you see that kick again. And Burton had trouble with his footing. That's mainly the reason for the short kick. Heidenreich for a whole couple of yards at the most here. That tackle was by number 23, Rod Heimgartner. Here's Pullman ready to go with one and in at quarterback, and they're in an eye. Fake, and a give to Brooks on that reverse, and he's tripped up on a fine defensive tackle by number 71, Kerry James, the middle guard or nose guard for Peninsula. Pullman's offensive line, number 75, Dave Raywald, as you watch it again. There you see Brooks, and there's what a fine play by Kerry James. And Critchfield cleans him up there. The right tackle is number 77, Kip Lincoln. The guards are number 65, Carl Kimball, and number 63, Chris Littlewood. And the center's number 51, Mike Small. Like to get those offensive linemen in there because they do a lion's share of the work for their respective teams. Wannan and Faking is back to pass. Throws it in the flat. Great try by McNeil. He can't come up with it. First incompletion for Wannanen in four tries. Jeff Selfers was defending on the play. He's the monster back or rover back for the Seahawks. Set that Seahawk secondary for you. It has been Attridge and Gene Thompson at the corners. Scott O'Hara and Jeff Selfers as the deep backs. Selfers is number 40 and O'Hara number 84. Wanted in the pass. In a hurry, overthrows. There was great rush that time by Craig Morse, number 74 for Peninsula, and a penalty flag is down. Penalty flag at the 40. It may be a pass interference call against Peninsula. The game hasn't been marred by penalties, Clay, but there have been a lot of them. Well, of course, this is a very decisive penalty because it would have forced a kick had not the penalty occurred. Now they have not only fine field position, but on the penalty, pick up the first down. Here's the replay, and I don't know whether it'll show the penalty. Well, there is the interference call, apparently. And now first down for the Greyhounds on their 46. I think Attridge got his hands on Pullman's number uh, 81, uh, Rich Michael Bust, with the ball in the air, and that's the interference call. First and 10, here is Pellerin, the fullback, at the 50-45 yard line. Near 10 yard gain by Doug Pellerin up the middle. Defensively for the Hawks, Hugo Critchfield, number 81, and Bob Doyle, number 80, are the ends. Bob Valley, number 70, who's made his presence so known in this game. He is at one tackle along with number 76, Tom Bushnell, and number 71, Kerry James, is the nose guard. They have a five-man front. Pullman's been using a four-man line. Second down and a yard. Again, Pellerin up the middle. And Pellerin's got the first down across the 40 to the 37-yard line. 2.24 to go in the half as Pullman tries to beat the clock and the Hawks. You see Pellerin again. Big guy shows great balance. Got eight more and has 31 yards and seven carries now, mostly through the middle of that Seahawk line. Michael Bust wide right. Brooks is a flanker to the left, or a wing left, I guess you should say. Here's the give to McNeil. 35-30, 25-yard line with Jeff Selfers hanging on for dear life and the Peninsula Seahawks yield another first down. Doug, talking about the explosiveness of the Seahawk team, these Greyhounds have that also, and here is the replay as they are chewing up huge chunks of yardage now, and at the 25 of the first down, very easily could take the lead before the half ends. A minute 53 left in this first half. McNeil's got a great rushing average, Clay. Six carries, 62 yards here in the first half. Wannan and smartly running this Pullman club now to Pellerin up the middle, and he's got five more to the 20. A minute and 35, so time becomes very important. Picking up five. 
Tom Bushnell made the tackle, as you see it again. Now you see Tom, number 76. He's the guy wrapping Pellerin up around the ankles. Second and five for Pullman. A give to Pellerin again. He's got a couple at the 18. A minute and five seconds left in the half. Peninsula with a 14 to 13 lead. And Wannanen wants timeout with one minute to go in the half, and he'll go across the way to meet with the veteran Ray Hobbs, who not only Clay's been 26 years in football at Pullman, but coached basketball for about 15 of those, and now serves as athletic director and activities coordinator. One thing I think noted in some of the playoffs, there are a lot of the coacher, coaches with uh, long tenure, in fact. Losing a lot of fine players from last year's team that made the semifinals, and he's back again. What a record they've had. 20 and 3 the past two seasons. Third and 3. Third down, three yards to go now for the Greyhounds. One and on a draw to Pellerin. He tried to swing outside, and he's short of the first down at the 16 yard line, and they may go for a field goal. Pellerin picking up one. Off down, he makes the initial attack. Greyhounds are going to call time again. There are just 47 seconds left. We're in the first half, and it's been quite a game. Now, Doug, here's a decision to make. Fourth kicked a 32-yard field goal against Cheney, and then Lincoln missed a 17-yard field goal against O'Day. So they're one for four, and they're not going to kick it. Fourth and two, and they're going to go. Pellerin has gone out of the game, incidentally. And here is a give, uh, and it looks like a first down inside the 15 at the 14-yard line, and let's see if that's McNeil. No, it's number 34 who uh, came into the game, Paul Goble. So Goble into the game with 22 seconds to go on the half, gets the first down. 20 seconds to go in the first half. Wanted and fumbles the snap. Penalty flag goes down with 14 seconds to go, and that stops the clock. Pullman trails Peninsula, 14 to 13, in the first half of this one. Going to have quite a halftime show for you as the Kentridge Chargers band performed. This King Bowl clay is also accompanied by a state band concert, and all of the bands are going to be on the field later in the AAA championship game. There's that fumble we're talking about. Penalty apparently is a motion penalty against Pullman, and if they now go for the field goal, they'll have pretty good distance on this kick. Ball is at the 16-yard line. 14 seconds are left in the half. They're going to march the five yards off against Pullman, which will put the ball at the 19-yard line. Mark Publes is also into the game. Uh, he replaced Pellerin. He's wearing number 42. Goble stays in the game. Seven seconds to go in the half. Pullman uh, with Wannanen throwing. Going to try for it. There is Goble. He's got a touchdown. One second left in the half. Did one and never put it on the money, Clay. And we'll see that in replay. Beautifully thrown, beautifully executed pass play. There you see him taking it in over his shoulder. A nice reception. And the Pullman Greyhounds have taken the lead. They beat the gun just a second left. Scott O'Hara battled, uh, batted futilely for the football there. And now it'll be Lincoln to try the extra point as Pullman on the last gasp of the first half has gone in front. The kick is up and good, and it is Pullman 20 and Peninsula 14 with one tick left in the half. And this is only the beginning because we'll have an exciting second half remaining. And the way these teams can score and move the football, it's anyone's game. Incidentally, while we await the kickoff with just one second remaining, we might recap on the games played earlier as we've had a tremendous day in the King Bowl and King Bowl 2. In the B-11 game, it was the Willapa Valley Vikings 12 and the Reardon Indians 6. 
The Blaine Borderites defeated the Granger Spartans by a score of 20 to 7, and Oakville defeated Tushy by a score of 32-26 in a, a very exciting B8 game. Scancy at the 10 to receive Lincoln's kickoff. He'll boot it short and uh, hope to prevent a big run back. It's Tony Williams. He's at the 40, 41 yard line on the final play of the first half of this football game. So in a dandy duel between two well-coached football teams, there you see it on your screen.